Mom, who did you go to the amusement park with? It all started with a question from my daughter. What are you talking about? That's just the places you visited, right? There's an amusement park listed here. My seven-year-old daughter, Aria, with a puzzled look, was pointing at the car navigation history. While I was loading groceries into the car, she must have tinkered with it, having learned how to operate it at some point. Why is there a record of a place we didn't go? Suspicious, I checked the date, and it was set to last Sunday. The only person who used the car that day was my husband, Timothy. He said he was definitely going golfing with his boss that day. With friends of the same sex? But there's no need to hide it, right? Could it be an affair? These doubts made me frown unintentionally. Mom, what's wrong? You look scared. Are you okay? I'm fine, sorry. I just made a little mistake in the settings. Nobody went to the amusement park. Oh, okay. After brushing off my daughter's concerns, I took a deep breath to hide my confusion about my husband's suspected infidelity and started driving. I'm Natalie, 38 years old. I live with my 7-year-old daughter and my 42-year-old husband. After getting married, I continued working, but became a housewife when I got pregnant with my daughter. This was at my husband's request, as he often had to stay home alone as a child and didn't want our child to feel lonely. Tonight's dinner is delicious, and the house is so clean and comfortable. Thank you as always. My husband always appreciated my effort like this, However, his attitude began to change gradually about six months ago. Today's meal isn't very tasty. The house seems dusty, too. At first, he would grumble like this, furrowing his brow. I seasoned it as usual, and I clean every day. What? Are you saying I'm wrong? No, but... I'm not feeling well. I'm going to bed. My husband angrily slammed his fork on the table, stood up abruptly, kicked the chair and went to the bedroom. Something upset him. At that time, I just thought he was in a bad mood. But that was the beginning of his increasingly worse behavior. You're a housewife. You should work harder for the house. He started berating me whenever something happened. What's this meal? It looks so unappetizing. I don't even want to eat it. But cream stew is your favorite, isn't it? This is cream stew? Dog food would be better. I'm throwing this away. Wait, what are you doing? He threw the pot of food I made into the sink, seeing his triumphant look. Even though you're a housewife, you still make this kind of garbage? If you're going to learn from this, you should learn more about cooking. I felt a surge of frustration, but managed to hold back tears and fled to the bathroom. Mom, are you okay? Did you and Dad fight? Our exchange must have been heard by my daughter who had finished her meal earlier and returned to her room. Just a little mistake by mom. It's okay, really. I said to my daughter with a smile, then cried alone in the bathroom. I mustn't worry, aren't you? Maybe Timothy is just taking out his frustrations from work on me. He's not the type to talk about work, so I thought he must be boggling things up. I believed that if I endured, he would eventually return to being the kind of husband he once was. However, contrary to my hopes, his attitude only worsened. I sold about half your coats and clothes. What? Why? There wasn't enough space for my clothes. I made a decent amount of money from them. In a panic, I checked the closet and found that among the many items belonging to my husband, only a few of mine remained. More than half are gone! Staying at home and having more than two outfits is a luxury. You should be more frugal. All that was left of mine were undergarments, a thin t-shirt, jeans, and the shoes I usually wear. Seeing me at a loss, he just smirked. Is there any point in tolerating this anymore? But Arya needs her dad. Thinking of my daughter who adores her father, I felt I had no choice but to endure. But gradually, my husband began to grow cold towards Arya too. Dad, today at school... Dad's tired. Tell me tomorrow. But Dad, you haven't been listening to me lately. I'll listen sometime. Dad's busy with the work. Don't bother me. I'm sorry. Ignoring his sad daughter, my husband went to the bedroom. This repeated day 
after day. How can he be so cold to Aria? But she loves her dad. I was at a loss about what to do, and six months passed in this turmoil. And then I found that history in the car navigation. I was deeply disappointed, but at the same time, it explained my husband's recent behavior. But still, it's not definite proof of an affair. Hoping in my heart that my suspicions were wrong, I searched the car. The result was the worst. Lipstick for young women in the dashboard. Earrings in the seat crevice. Apparently, my husband's mistress was quite bold. Leaving such evidence seemed intentional, as if challenging me. I immediately confronted my husband with the evidence. I found these in the car. So what? He avoided looking at the items and started touching his ear and neck, clearly unsettled. Lipstick and earrings that aren't mine or Arya's, whose are they? How should I know? Arya must have picked them up somewhere. That's not possible. What are you saying, I'm having an affair? Aren't you? All this evidence? As I pressed him with the evidence, he threw it at me with all his might. The earrings and lipstick hit my chest and rolled onto the floor. This is your fabrication. This can't be evidence. How dare you, a useless housewife? Accuse your husband of this. Have some shame. He raged with flared nostrils and wide eyes. His frantic denials only confirmed my suspicions. He's upset because getting caught would look bad. He's so stingy. He probably doesn't want to pay child support for Aria if we divorce. I feel sick. I'm going to bed. He went to the bedroom without admitting his affair. I can't take this anymore. But is it okay to divorce like this? This isn't solid proof. And I don't want to make Arya sad. Even in this situation, I was torn. But no matter how much I thought, I couldn't find an answer. <sighs> I sighed deeply, locked the earrings and lipstick in a drawer, ensuring they wouldn't be thrown away. A few days later, something happened that forced me to make a decision. That day, I was ill and bedridden from the morning. My husband, who had been distant since I confronted him about the affair, showed no concern. Whatever, when told. When he peeked into the bedroom, I foolishly thought he might be concerned. I have sudden work, going to the office, he said briskly, and tried to close the bedroom door. I have a fever. Can you take me to the hospital? I grabbed his arm weakly, trying to move my feverish body. Why should I care about your health? A wife who can't manage her health is a failure. He looked down on me with contempt and pushed me away forcefully. Ouch! He left without a glance at me, lying on the floor, and closed the door behind him. This treatment was too cruel. I was on the verge of tears from frustration and sadness. But I suppressed those emotions and picked up my mobile phone. I don't need to wear perfume to go to work, right? I had noticed a faint smell of perfume when I clung to my husband. That's when I realized his true intentions. Trusting my instincts, I waited for the time when my husband would likely have gone to work and called his office. As I suspected, I got the answer I was expecting. Hi, I'm Timothy's wife. Can I speak to him, please? Uh, I'm the only one doing overtime today. The male employee's response, tinged with confusion, didn't sound like a lie. After ending the call, I was filled with anger. He lies shamelessly to see his mistress, even when his wife is suffering. Who's the one failing as a spouse? Clearly, it's this despicable man. It's obviously not good for Arya, either. In that moment, my doubts vanished. I decided to divorce my husband and punish him thoroughly. A week later, I left my daughter with my parents and summoned his mistress to our house while he was home. I got her contact information secretly from my husband's mobile phone. Her name is Lucy. After messaging back and forth, I learned she was 27. A woman who leaves such deliberate evidence would not hesitate to respond to my summons. About five minutes past the time I had set, the doorbell rang. Did you get that? What? You open it. But she's more related to you, isn't she? Me. Look, this person. Looking at the screen, there was a young woman with long hair, fidgeting with it in annoyance. 
My husband's face was priceless when he saw the woman on the screen. His eyes darted around, mouth opening and closing like a fish out of water. What? Why? How come? In a fluster, he ran to the front door. Immediately after, voices of argument between my husband and his mistress echoed from the entrance. I peeked out from the living room. Get out. No, I'm going to tell your wife everything. Let me in. Don't be ridiculous. Quiet down. You'll bother the neighbors. Just let her in. Reluctantly, my husband let the mistress into the house, wary of the neighbors. What's this all about? Calling me out like this, you old hag? The mistress arrived without a hint of remorse. After all, a woman who leaves such evidence in a car isn't going to be shy. I was prepared for her brazen attitude. I called you both here to discuss your affair. As I began, my husband's face turned pale, while the mistress remained nonchalant. She's just a colleague. I'm her supervisor, so we're close. Supervising her in what? Things like this and that? How indecent. It's work supervision, obviously. Ignoring my husband's pathetic lies, I presented the earrings and lipstick I had kept in the drawer to the mistress. These are yours, right? Oh, you found my little gift. So it was intentional. I wanted to make you aware of my existence and make you jealous. Your husband's been neglecting you and your daughter for fun with a younger woman. <laughs> Such audacity. The mistress laughed mockingly, exuding confidence. I was astonished by her brazen attitude. No, she's just saying whatever. Those aren't Lucy's. Calm down, darling. No need to be scared of this old woman. Just shut up. I have more evidence, you know. What? As I laid out the evidence, my husband became increasingly panicked, sweating profusely. First, this hotel points card I found in your wallet. Ugh, snooping through your husband's wallet. How low? The mistress exclaimed dramatically, but I continued. This is a hotel receipt, and your mistress isn't very smart, is she? What? This is a photo she posted on her blog, a selfie of you two. I laid out a photo on the table showing my husband and the mistress cozily arm in arm. The photo, along with others, was too intimate for mere colleagues. Why did you post such a picture? Aren't we getting married? Then it's no problem. You said that? No, I... Yeah, my darling promised to divorce that rotten vegetable of a wife and marry me. The mistress boasted to me with a triumphant look seemingly oblivious to my husband, who was clutching his head as if it were the end of the world. Could you, a charmless, wrinkled woman, not interfere with our pure love? How dare you call it pure when you're engaging in something as disgraceful as an affair? My darling and I are meant to be. We just met at the wrong time. Then you should have divorced me first before starting a relationship. That's common sense. Our bond was so strong that we couldn't wait. The mistress was full of confidence throughout. She spewed embarrassingly naive statements, utterly convinced that she was my husband's true choice. So being tightly bound means it's okay to slack off at work and indulge in love. You know about that? Going to hotels with this woman while pretending to be on sales rounds? All of this I discovered using my savings from before I was married, hiring a detective. Presenting this evidence, my husband crumbled to his knees. Oh, murmuring in a voice barely audible. I'm already working with a lawyer, so I'll be asking both of you for a $30,000 security deposit for the infidelity divorce case. What? There's no way I can pay that. The mistress panicked, threw her lipstick at me, but I easily brushed it aside. I've already informed Timothy's parents and your parents about this matter. You're lying, right? Telling our parents? Don't tell Dad and Mom. That's unforgivable. I've also reported your hotel visits during work hours to your company. You told the company. If they find out, I could get a salary cut or even fired. You're going this far? I'll be asking you for $80,000 in child support for Aria. When did you become such a cold-hearted woman? You don't seem like the Natalie I know. My husband, used to my submissive nature... Never imagined I could corner him like this. He looked at me as if I were a stranger. I haven't changed. 
You're the one who's changed. Such a thing. <sighs> Again, my husband hung his head, sighing heavily. Meanwhile, the mistress couldn't accept the situation. Ruining a young woman's life and feeling good about it, you old hag? You are the one who messed up my life first. You're responsible for your actions. I don't care if I get fired. I'll start a new life with my darling. Please forgive me. My husband begged, his head hitting the floor with such force it seemed he might break it. What? What are you saying, darling? I don't want a divorce. I never intended to start a new life with you. What do you mean? You said you'd divorce her and marry me. I was just saying that to lighten the mood. I have no intention of divorcing Natalie. You were happily talking about throwing away her food and clothes. Wasn't it all to get a divorce? That was. I just got more and more pleasure seeing Natalie in pain. I never thought she would talk about divorce. That's horrible. You never intended to marry me? Marry a stupid woman? Who posts our photos online while we're supposed to be a secret? No way. That's too much. The mistress looked disappointed. Please, Natalie. I swear I'll never cheat again. Can you overlook this just once? He grabbed my arm, pleading. This was the exact opposite of when I, feeling ill, tried to stop him from leaving. You failed as a husband and a father. There's no choice but divorce. We're a couple, right? You must feel something when your husband apologizes this much. We'll soon no longer be a couple, and I see no remorse in you, so the divorce is non-negotiable. Realizing I wouldn't budge, he finally released my arm. In just a few hours, my husband's face aged drastically. I handed him the divorce papers I had prepared in advance. My daughters and my belongings are already moved to my parents' house. After you fill out the divorce papers, contact my lawyer. I had no more business here. No lingering feelings for my husband. Leaving the lawyer's card next to the divorce papers, I walked out the door. This is too much. What a victim you look like. Give me back my life, you traitor. The mistress, tears in the corners of her eyes, pounced on my husband like an angry cat. She scratched his face with her manicured nails, her long hair flailing. Ouch, help me. I'll never forgive you, you piece of trash. I left the house I'd grown accustomed to, ignoring my husband's outstretched hand. Later, I heard from the lawyer that my husband, who brought the divorce papers, had a face covered in scratches. The mistress not only damaged his face, but also wrecked our house. I promptly filed the divorce papers, and Timothy became my ex-husband. He was fired from his job due to the hotel visits during work hours, deemed as misconduct. The mistress was fired, too. My ex-husband, having caused a disturbance in the apartment and damaged the interior, was evicted. He took a dangerous loan from a shady financial institution to pay the security deposit and child support in one lump sum. Now, chased by a terrifying interest rate, working tirelessly at a factory by day and a construction site at night, the mistress, previously living with her parents, was kicked out and took a similar loan to pay the security deposit, working tirelessly through the night, leveraging her youth. As for me, I decided to return to work while staying with my parents, dedicating more love and care to Aria than ever.